Thank you for taking the time to view this video on Virtual Director. This is one of several videos discussing the Firefly Suite. The Firefly Suite is composed of Firefly Perimeter, Firefly Host, and this application, Virtual Director. There's a couple of slides I'll go over in order to level set everyone on what it is Virtual Director is supposed to do, and then I'll go into a demonstration of its main features. Here's an architecture diagram that shows Virtual Director and the other elements in the Juniper portfolio. First of all, the, at the very top uh, of the diagram, you'll see a Juno Space box. Juno Space is the management application for several different apps from Juniper. There's an app for managing your switching infrastructure. There's an app called Security Director for managing the firewall policies, VPN policies, IDS settings, those sorts of things, the element management of a firewall. Virtual Director was designed to do virtualization management and instantiation. So the way this works is on the right hand side, Virtual Director is used to connect to other management platforms for the virtual environment, such as Virtual Center. That's what's supported in the 1.0 release of Virtual Director. What it actually does is it connects to the Virtual Center infrastructure and allows us to see what's happening in the VMware environment. It allows us to instantiate VMs and do different things in order to embed the security into that area. Security Director is still used to manage the security policies, VPN, firewall policies, those sorts of things for the virtual environment, the virtual firewall, as well as the physical environment. So you have Security Director to manage your firewall policies on a physical SRX, Security Director to manage your firewall policies on a virtual version of the SRX known as Firefly Perimeter, and Virtual Director to automate the provisioning, do some monitoring, and, and be that connector into that cloud environment, all from the space platform. So what does that really mean? Uh, the first part is actual provisioning of the, the Firefly Perimeter VM. So in 1.0, we only support Firefly Perimeter VMs, although in our portfolio, we have several different types of virtual capable products. For example, our event flow and correlation system can run as a VM, our SSL a VPN appliance can run as a virtual machine. Lots of those applications will be used by virtual director in the future to be able to install and, and, and roll those out. But for right now, Firefly Perimeter is the first application that virtual director is supporting. And the, the, the best way to think about virtual director and what it does is to kind of step back and think about what you do when you actually deploy a physical firewall. So when you deploy a physical firewall, you take it out of the box, you put it in a rack, you, you wire the physical interfaces. It may have you know, multiple ports, five, six, seven, eight ports on it. You wire those ports, those physical NICs to physical switches. Then you take a system with a crossover connection and you, you start to configure the actual IP address and an initial username and password and those sorts of elements. You power it up so that it will register itself out into the uh, element management station like Security Director. So you configure all these things, you, you reboot it, it, it comes online, uh, and then you go to Security Director and you start to, to push it policies with our, with our uh, element management system. That, all of that work is very easily automated with virtual directors. So there's no need to take all those steps and do that by hand in a virtual environment. We have software that can do all of that for you. So, so that's the, the, the core of what Virtual Director 1.0 does. It does that provisioning of the, the virtual machine. It does the bootstrapping, the initial settings that you want. And it also allows you to do some initial monitoring, injects all of those things so that Security Director can begin pushing a policy. It's a central place for us to have control over 
the entire life cycle of the VM. So we have the ability to instantiate the Firefly Perimeter VM. We have the ability to tear it down. We have the ability to push it a policy and then tear it down. All of these sorts of things can happen very dynamically. And in a cloud environment, say you're a service provider, you're bringing up tens, hundreds, thousands of these uh, each week or each month, you need a, a very quick and easy way to instantiate these services. So that's what this does. It has a web interface that I'll walk through, but everything you're gonna see in the web interface also has an API behind the scenes. So you, we offer to our customers from the space area APIs to control the element from security director API, so I can change the firewall, and also APIs to control the actual instantiation of that firewall. So from one spot, you get the ability to control end-to-end -end the use of, of that virtual firewall. And that's a really important point, not release any kind of uh, product that didn't have a good user experience from a management perspective. So this, this tool, Virtual Director, is very important uh, to Juniper because that user experience of deploying and managing uh, firewalls, whether they're virtual or physical, is, is key to us. In addition to Virtual Direct, their Firefly Perimeter, of course, uh, has a, a couple of other ways to manage the actual Firefly uh, VM. There's JWeb, which is a web uh, interface for the individual VM that's been instantiated. Security Director is the, the management of multiple VMs, so you can push policy to multiple Firefly Perimeter VMs, whereas JWeb is just a single Firefly Perimeter v, VM being managed at one time. And then there's APIs that I talked about in both Virtual Director and Security Director, but also APIs to manage that device directly. So things like NetConf and, and all those automation pieces that are, are very important to uh, Juniper are all uh, possible with with these different tools listed here. Now, the one thing that um, folks may be uh, trying to, to understand is, is how does this kind of play into things like OpenStack or vSphere Client or any of those tools? And, and the way to think about it is you could still use those tools, right? You could still instantiate a VM and plug it into the rec correct places with something like OpenStack or with the vSphere client. Um, you could also use Contrail and OpenStack and, and have a, you know, a full SDN network uh, developed. So that's on one end of the spectrum, fully automated, you know, very integrated and kind of deployed and dynamic SDN network. And then there's just, you know, managing a single instance on vSphere client, right? And so on those two ends, ends of the network, you could go in and, and manually use vSphere client to instantiate a Firefly perimeter VM, or you could use all that automation tools. Think of Virtual Director somewhere in the middle there where it's offering the opportunity to easily instantiate lots of VMs without having to do a full SDN uh, story and, and completely deploy OpenStack and Contrail and a bunch of other tools. There are screens and other things that will be developed in this that aren't related to provisioning and bootstrapping over time as well, right? So it's starting as a bootstrapping and provisioning tool, but over time, it's expected to be the, the, the brain, if you will, into the virtual environment um, from, from space for, uh, for products. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and, and flip over to the, the actual demonstration I have a, a pretty simple environment here. Right now I'm logged into vSphere Client. So again, I could come in here and, and grab a template and start to deploy Firefly VMs right here in this environment. Um, but we're going to use Security Director, Virtual Director, and all, all the space applications to do this completely. I just opened vSphere Client so you could get a level set on the environment. There's a couple of VSX uh, I hosts in here, a few web VMs that have been deployed. Um, there's some other infrastructure in here that uh, you, you see that, uh, that is for other demos and, and some uh, Firefly host elements is in, in well as well. So don't be distracted by those, but this is pretty simple vSphere environment. I'm going to keep an eye on this as we go through so that I can show you uh, different events that happen in here. The first part I'll do now is log into the space VM. So I'm going to just 
log into the space VM space again. It's our management platform. It's actually running as a VM right here in this infrastructure. You can see the space 13.1 VM right here. It's a uh, got a web interface on it, obviously, and a database to, to kind of manage all of, all of the different applications and the objects. So I'm going to log in here. And the first thing that's going to happen is going to present me a, a, a landing screen inside a virtual director. I have uh, different sets of apps. Um, and, you know, I'm in the virtual director app right now. I'll flip over to those other ones here shortly. But on, those, on the main dashboard, it's pretty simple. There's just some summary items of uh, providers and templates and groups that I'll talk about here as, as we go through the interface. There's some alerts. I had a couple of deletion failures. Uh, I had some deployments that, that, that popped up alerts. So you can kind of drill into some of those. There's some quick links to the different common tasks. But the first part of using Virtual Director is in the design area. So we're going to focus our attention here on the, on the design portion. And in the design area, the first thing to do is to, to define a, a provider. So what a provider is, is there's different, if you remember back to that architecture diagram, there's different types of virtual uh, products out there. There's Virtual Center, there's OpenStack, there's Hyper-V, there's all of these uh, things that we're just generally defining as a provider. So from perspective of virtual director, the first thing to do is define the credentials and so forth in order to create a connection into one of those virtual infrastructure. So you could define a name, an IP address, some account credentials, and then the type of provider. And in this case, there's a VMware vCenter uh, provider. And there's already been one defined here. So in this demo environment, the IP address of the virtual center is .49, uh, and it's you know vSphere 5.1, and there's some kind of last connection attempt information. I could disable this if I, if I wanted to for troubleshooting or some other purposes. But right now it's enabled. That provider's already been defined, so we don't have to do that step. The next step would be to define the OVF file that you're going to use to instantiate Firefly Perimeter VMs off of. So again, there's one defined here already. It's as easy as simply uh, downloading the, the OVA file from Juniper.net and then uploading it here into the system. Once you do that, it identifies some information about that. There's different versions, right? So right now, the latest shipping release of Firefly Perimeter is X46. In a couple of months, it'll be X47. And so you can import those to, to make sure you always have the latest uh, and greatest version of the software. Pretty easy step there. Literally takes a couple of seconds to import it up. The next part is the, the part to, to actually define the template itself that you're going to use to instantiate bunches of VMs. So there's a couple of steps here. There's a wizard that we'll walk through to, to actually define this. So if I was going to define a new one, I would just come in here and do create and I could say, you know, this is the test version or, you know, whatever it is. You could pull down, and since I already cr uh, created that image file, it's listed here. So we did that step. Uh, you can then start to define information about that environment. So right now, it's it, it's basically saying what virtualization area are you going to query, and then what data center, what cluster members are there. All of this information is being read from that provider connection. So we established that provider connection and. What it's doing is it's is virtual directors reaching out to virtual center and determining what exists in virtual center. And so there's two hosts and you have kind of resource pools. All of this stuff is discovered from VMware dynamically, right? So if I went to the VMware screen, you would see there's two hosts here, there's resource pools just like are defined here uh, in this screen. So we're discovering all of that. Well, the data store, you, would, you, you could select all of these items and then you can start to, to make things like how many NICs do you want these, these Firefly Perimeter VMs to have when you get in, instantiated. So maybe I would add, I want them each to have three NICs and, and then you define what 
port groups those virtual NICs are connected to. So you can see we've discovered via VMware, we've discovered all the port groups that exist in that environment and we're displaying them here. So you could say, just like in a physical world, you got multiple physical NICs going to different switches. In a virtual world, you have vNICs going to V switches. A port group is just a construct on top of the V switch. So you, you can define that pretty simply and pretty quickly uh, within this wizard. You can then go and make decisions based on the next piece here. So the, the next part is each one of these VMs that we boot up is going to need a, a, a new root name and password, right? So, so you can define that password for the root account. You can also define some patterning for the different VMs that are built. So each VM that comes up is going to have a different name, right? It has to have a different name and it has to have some IP addressing, whether it's going to be DHCP or static. If it's static, you define the gateway and then arrange a block block of addresses in order to start instantiating VMs from. So the idea is, hey, I'm going to build this virtual device template and I'm going to use this to instantiate 10 VMs. And so you would populate this information and then you could, right before you deploy, tell me how many VMs I'm going to deploy off this information. This saves you from having to set this stuff over and over again, right? Like now you can just set that one time in this virtual device template and then just use that template in the future. So with a couple of clicks, you can deploy out a firewall off of this predefined device template. So I'm not gonna save this one. We already have one here and I'm gonna show you just that. I'm gonna show you that, that action of, I've got this predefined template. I went through all of that wizard steps that I just did a month ago and I don't wanna to have to do that every time I'm gonna deploy a virtual firewall. Instead, I'd like to have a, basically a shortcut. And so that's what this is. I'm just gonna select this and as an action, you can see on the right hand side, it changed all and, and quickly shows me all the information for this template. So if you had you know, multiple ones, you could figure out the difference. This is you know, template version one, two, three, it may be based on different versions of Firefly in the background. So pretty easy, I select that template. I'm gonna say deploy template now. At the last second, I may want to change some of those parameters, right? So we give you, again, some more flexibility in order to go in and change those. I could just type in here, deploy 10 and hit deploy and it would start. But I'm going to come in here and just kind of review this with you and say, okay, here's the information. It's going to deploy this on Firefly Demo 1 host and it's going to dump it on that data store. It's gonna have two virtual NICs connected. They happen to be connected to the same network. Don't, don't really you know, worry about that. But I'm gonna just in here um, call this one finance. And I'm also going to in here give it a new uh, password. So type that in. I'll just go ahead and call this finance. I'll say this is the first uh, finance server, so it'll be finance one. So the difference between those uh, names, there's a host name, which is actually the kind of the operating system name of the fire, firewall itself. And then there's a VM name, uh, which is uh, can be different, right? So you can make those the same or different or, or whatever. I'm, I'm just using this as, a, as an example. For the actual network, I'm gonna just uh, have it be a static address. There's only one of them. So it's just gonna start at 92 and end at 92 because there's only one. But if you wanted to do 10, then you would say uh, it would go 92 um, and then 10 increments from there. So pretty easy. That's all I have to do at this point. Everything looks ready to go. So I'll hit deploy. It does a job ID and, and, and kicks that off and I can go into the applications or the deployment status and see that job request ID. It's just started so it hasn't refreshed its update here. But if I flip back to virtual center, I can see the actions that are starting to happen. So I'm cloning a VM off that template file and then now I'm powering that virtual machine on. You can see it's finance and it's un called underscore one. And so this VM was deployed on Firefly Demo 1, the server that I told it to deploy on. If I actually click on this guy, you'll uh, you'll see that it's, it's uh, the ability to kind of go and just open the console and look right at it being built. The storage location is uh, Demo 1, FF Demo 1, so that's the SAN it's going on. Uh, so 
that uh, version of Juniper Firefly is, is, is already created and is getting powered on and, and booted up. So I can come back to the, the virtual director and see this. If I just refresh, it's going to update the status. It's now uh, at 100%. It's done. You can see we've deployed lots of stuff. And if you have a deployment failure, like here on the bottom, it'll tell you, you know, what happened, why that, that actual uh, failure occurred. So there's different ways to kind of sort this and, and look at the, the different items. But we don't need anything more than that at this point. We can come to this area and, and to have a look at the actual devices. So I'm going to start retrieving some information out of this. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and uh, do a discovery of this device. And there's APIs to do this and, and uh, some other ways to, to kind of automate all this. But you'll see here in this screen, I have two other things that are in an unmanaged state. So it's possible that somebody created a Firefly perimeter without using Virtual Director, right? So somebody just went straight to vSphere Client and deployed a, a Firefly perimeter VM. That's okay. Like we can we can deal with that situation. Virtual Director, since it's connected to Virtual Sender, it's going to see the v, the Firefly parameters that were deployed with the tool or without it. And if it was deployed without it, it's okay. We can still manage that device and, and kind of bring it online from the the rest of the management tool. So that's by design that we have that ability to to kind of take ownership of those VMs, even if they weren't created with the with the tool. I have this. This uh, Finance One, you can see it's in, in a managed state at this point. It's refreshed. So I'm just going to click it and make sure that we're we're uh, definitely connected to it. So now we're we're connected. We have some stats here. So it's not doing anything on the network yet. There's you know so there's no flow statistics and you can see the interface status and information like that. You can also see the CPU that's in use, the memory that's being used, two gig of RAM and and uh, just a, a, a touch of memories. Uh, uh, and CPU have been used. So, so some basic stats. It's already communicating a little bit. Some TCP traffic has been sent out from it, mainly communication back to, to this system. So that's this piece. Now, the, the, the cool part is, like, the VM has been created. It's existing in the tool, and, and we're, we're, you know, in a, in a ready-to-go state. What I want to do next is, is actually just bounce over to Security Director and show you from a firewall policy perspective that we can go ahead and, and push that policy. So now I'm in Security Director, and if I go into to, to a Security Director devices, I should see that. So boom, we just created that. Finance VM is in there. And, and what I'm going to do in here is is just import its existing uh, configuration information. So there's in that template there was some uh, some con configuration information. I'm gonna go ahead and just import that. And so here's the the report. There was three rules on that VM that were were kind of embedded in the in the OVF file. And I'm gonna just go ahead and finish that. And so we can see this uh, set of rules already in, in the firewall policy uh, um, piece. So I'm gonna just let this finish processing and then we'll, we'll take a look at the firewall policy. Maybe modify the policy and, and push it out so that you get a, get a, get a feel for, for security director. So this is the status and we imported that device. So now when I come into the firewall area, We'll have the finance policy, and we have the ability here, basically unlock this guy, and we could change this set of rule. Maybe I want to do a, a, a different rule and say, well, uh, you know, if it's some kind of traffic here that I don't like, maybe I'm going to do uh, just something simple, some R R RPC piece. And move that over there. So there's, you know, I've edited a policy like that. I could save that, uh, and then we can deploy that policy out to that firewall. So that's pretty simple. The, you know, the the policy editor for from a security perspective, we have the device. Uh, there's also some things on the device now that it exists in in the in the setup that you know we could come in here and maybe I want to see. The, the active configuration. And so I can 
uh, do this right in, in the space platform and get an idea for, you know, the active config, the file that was actually deployed out on this. So flipping back over to, to virtual director, we'll just finish out a couple of the screens there. So the, the cool thing is, is I've deployed that, that um, fire firewall with uh, the tool here and so we uh, we went through all three of the main options in the design area defining a provider defining the the, the virtual file that you're going to deploy off of and then defining the actual steps in the wizard the username and password the, the IP addresses all that information uh, in that device template so that section is covered the dashboard's been covered the monitoring status we we took a look at the different statistics that you can get from the deployed VMs and so there's you know some more stats that are starting to collect here and uh, you know just a, a snapshot of, of, of what's happening with that particular device the deployment status we looked at so you know this was just kind of the net of, of the latest quest IDs or job IDs there's some application settings, so if you get alerts or something like that, we can send those out via emails. Now, the next thing that I want to show is the deployed device uh, option. So we can do things like power off the device or reset it, or these are all VM actions, right? Like I want to reset the VM, and I can do that, see different elements uh, of the VM uh, so the, the guest operating system, who deployed it, what provider it was used, those sorts of things. And I also have some grouping constructs so that I can quickly view all the, the VMs. So this is a very simple example. I had predefined this finance group. And so I created what's known as a smart group inside of Virtual Director. And let me just show you, if I come here and I do a view members, it will show me all the members. There's one in here, it's not that complicated, but imagine you had hundreds of firewalls and they belong to different departments or tenants or whatever and and you you needed to quickly be able to sort and go through and, and see those members and then be able to click on them and kind of drill into the statistics and so forth that we've been looking at that that can happen from this this group construct that we have so there's two types of groups there's smart groups and static groups and people who are familiar with with firefly host will be very familiar with how these groups are are built so a static group is exactly what you uh, would expect. It's a, a simple, you know, test and you would come in here and you would define these are the members of the static group, right? And you manually do that. But the way the finance group was created was a smart group. So if we look at this, we can see finance, smart group, and we have these different attributes. And so the attribute that I used was the name of the VM contains finance, put it in the member. So this is kind of the way I explain it every single time is that it's like an iTunes playlist or an Outlook filter. You have, you know, multiple options to determine the members of the group. Here's the number of attributes that we have, what cluster it's on, what data center, what resource pool it's connected to, those sorts of things will make you have the ability to set up a, a group that's driven by parameters, right? And so that just makes it easy. If I deployed an engineering VM out and it had engineering in the name, it would end up in the engineering group right away. So that keeps, uh, keeps all your stuff organized. Eventually, we'll hook those groups into the policy editing pieces of security directors. So you can imagine coming here and saying, you know, automatically the, the security policies that are relevant for finance end up getting pushed to the finance firewalls. So that is discovered in the virtual environment. Here's the things. Information just gets passed into our element uh, management piece. So that's it for the demo. I just want to remind folks that you can download space and security director and virtual director and, and all the, the, the Firefly pieces. Uh, you can you can see all the, the Firefly items, juniper.net slash Firefly. It has links to host, perimeter, and, and virtual director. So thanks for watching the video.